How are you guys doing? Today is Sunday, March 27th, 2022. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to preview the 2022 NCAA Women's March Madness bracket. At least I'm going to preview the Elite Eight round. Um, after yesterday was the second day of the Sweet 16 round has been completed, there will now be four games within this round to determine the four teams that will advance to next weekend's Final Four and then subsequent national championship game. Um, and already considering this was a bracket that had 60 teams, there are already 60 teams that have been eliminated. And I'm just going to walk you through how all eight of these teams got here. And of course, once we get to the final four i'm going to preview the final four once we get there um, but for right now i'm just going to show you how each of these teams were able to make it to the end of their respective regions within their bracket and they made it to their own regional finals with that said i'm going to look at this from each game as the one thing about this bracket that's the, the first thing that catches your eye is that all four regions had their one seed make it all the way to the elite eight it'll be very impressive to see if all of these one seeds end up winning their brackets and i i'm not sure if it would happen but it'll be really crazy if it did but we are one round away from seeing that happen but i'm just going to look into each matchup and give you a sense of what to look forward to as we are approaching these uh, matchups one day at a time and by the end of tomorrow there will be four teams left competing it's taking a look at the very first matchup today at seven o'clock on espn in the greensboro coliseum in greensboro uh the one seed in the greensboro region the south carolina gamecocks are going to face off against the 10 seed creighton blue jays taking a look first at how one seed South Carolina was able to make it into this round out of the SEC. Um, this coming after they would finish their season losing in the SEC tournament to Kentucky. They would win their first matchup against 16 seed Howard within their home stadium. Um, they would go on to outscore Howard 44 to 4 in the first half. In this matchup, they would be led in scoring by their starting forward, Aliyah Boston, who had 10 points and 12 rebounds. Also, their forward off the bench, Sanaya Fegan, had 12. 10 points and seven rebounds to help, to help South Carolina make it to the second round. In the second round, while still on their home court, they would go on to beat eight seed Miami. In this matchup, they would win by 16 after they had gone to out, they went on to outscore Miami 23 to 10 in the first half. In this matchup, they were led in scoring by their center off the bench, Camila Cardozo, as their sophomore out of Brazil would add on, she would finish with 11 of her own points to help South Carolina make it to the Sweet 16. And once they made it out of the first weekend, they would, of course, make sure that they were undefeated on their home court this season. Once they made it to the Sweet 16, they faced off against North Carolina a couple days ago. They would beat North Carolina in the Sweet 16 round, 69-61. to 61. Uh, They would win this matchup by eight after they were led in scoring by their starting forward, Aaliyah Boston, who finished with 28 points in 22 rebounds, a rare um, March Madness 2020 game, to help South Carolina make it all the way to this round, and a win here would help, would help them make it into the Final Four. And then, of course, taking a look at who South Carolina is going to be playing within this round. They are going to be facing off against the 10 C Creighton Blue Jays, who virtually made it to this round against all odds, but looking first at how they were able to make it here after they finished their regular season, uh, finishing at the hands of... Uh, or finishing losing to Seton Hall in the tournament. They would go on to play their first matchup in the bracket in Iowa as their first matchup would be against the um or they would face off for their very first matchup against the Colorado Buffaloes in Iowa City. In this first matchup against Colorado, they would beat Colorado by 10 um, after they outscore Colorado by 12 in the middle two quarters. Um, and not to mention that after the first quarter they went on to outscore Colorado by 14. On the winning end, they were led in scoring by their guard off the bench, Morgan Maley, um, as their uh, sophomore out of Crete, Nebraska, would finish with 20 points. She also had eight rebounds uh, off the bench. So, of course, that would be a very good, very good, very big game for her. Creighton would really be tested in the second round in this bracket as they were playing on Iowa's home court. They would face off against the Iowa Hawkeyes. They would end up beating Iowa by two, um, as that would be one of the bigger upsets of the tournament. They would be led in scoring by their starting guard, Lauren Jensen, as their sophomore out of Lake 
Louisville, Minnesota would finish with 19 points. And she also had 17 rebounds. With this win, Creighton would advance to the Sweet 16 region as this matchup was played in Greensboro. They would face off against the Iowa State Cyclones as they beat the two best basketball teams in Iowa. They beat Iowa State 76 to 68. Um, they won it by eight after outscoring Iowa State by eight in the third quarter. In this matchup, Creighton would go on to be led in scoring by their guard off the bench, Morgan Maley, um, as their sophomore out of Crete, Nebraska, will go on to finish with 21 points off the bench. Uh, so that would be how Creighton would make it here. This will be the matchup that will determine who will make it into the final four out of the Greensboro region. Um, so with that said, taking a look at what the next matchup is going to be in this uh, Elite Eight matchup, um, the next, I guess the next matchup will feature the defending champs, Stanford Cardinal, as they are the number one seed that is representing the Spokane region. They will face off against the two seed Texas Longhorns, looking first at how Stanford Cardinal was able to make it to the regional final of the Spokane region. They played their first weekend's games on their home court in Palo Alto after they would go on to finish their regular season with a Pac-12 win against Utah. In the first round of this matchup, they would beat 16 seed Montana State. They won it by 41. Uh, this would, of course, come as no the, the the when with this win they would go on to outscore Montana State 20 to nothing in the first quarter as they were up 41 to 12 at the half. On the winning end of this matchup, Stanford would go on to be led in scoring in this particular game um, by their guard off the bench. Hannah Jump, their junior out of San Jose, would go on to shoot five for 11 from three, as that is how Stanford would make it out of the first round. Once Stanford would make it to the second round, they would face off against eight seed Kansas, once again on the Stanford home court. They would beat Kansas by 26 in front of their home fans as they would finish their home, they would finish their uh, season 16 and one at home um, before they went to the Sweet 16, before they went to the Sweet 16. In their second round matchup, they would go on to be led by their guard, Lexi Hull, out of Spokane, Washington. Lexi Hull will go on to finish with 36 points and six steals to help help take Stanford to her hometown and not to mention that their forward their starting forward Cameron Brink would finish with 13 points 12 rebounds and a couple of steals once Stanford won their second round matchup they would make it to the sweet 16 round where they would face off against Maryland who won both of their games on their home court Stanford would go on to beat four seed Maryland by six they won 72 to 66 in the sweet 16 round in this matchup, Sanford would go on to be led in scoring by Lexi Hull. Their guard out of Spokane, Washington, would lead the team in scoring on her in her home city. She would go on to finish with 19 points and nine rebounds. Not to mention that also Sanford starting guard Haley Jones, their junior out of Santa Cruz, would go on to finish with 17 points and 10 rebounds. So that is how Stanford would be the team to represent. Uh, to they would be the number one seed to represent the West, particularly in this matchup. And now looking at their opponent the Texas Longhorns would make it into this round after they would end up beating the teams that they needed to get here looking at how Texas would fare in their season after finishing third in the Big 12 in the regular season and finishing their season with a tournament win versus Baylor they would enter this tournament um, beating Fa 15 seed Fairfield in their first matchup they would go on to outscore Fairfield 39 to 18 outscoring them by 21 in the first half before eventually winning this game by 18 Texas would go on to be led in scoring by their forward off the bench as Aaliyah Moore, their freshman out of Oklahoma, would finish with 18 points and 10 rebounds to get Texas to the second round. Once Texas made it to the second round, they would face off against seven seed Utah once again on their home court. Texas would win this game by 22 as they would go on to outscore Utah by 20 in the middle two quarters. They would be led in scoring by their guard off the bench, Aaliyah Moore, as their freshman out of more Oklahoma would go on to finish with 21 points. She would also go on to finish with five rebounds in the span, too. Um, once Texas won both of their games on their home court, they would go straight to Spokane, Washington. And in their Sweet 16 matchup, they would beat six seed Ohio State by three. They won it 66 to 63 after outscoring Ohio State by six in the second quarter. In this matchup, Texas would be led in scoring by their starting guard for the day, Joanne Allen Taylor. Their senior out of Houston, Texas, would go on to finish with 17 points. And even 
and adding in three assists to help make sure that Texas would be the team, um, the second seed in the Spokane region, as they will have to go through Stanford in this Elite Eight matchup that will happen today. The winner of this matchup will face off against the winner of the Bridgeport region between North Carolina State and Connecticut. So those are the ma- so Stan- so South Carolina Creighton and Stanford Texas are going to be the two matchups taking place today. Taking a look at the Elite Eight matchups that are going to be taking place tomorrow, looking now at the Bridgeport region, the one seed North Carolina State Wolfpack are going to face off against the two seed UConn Huskies as these two teams um, have won every single game to get here. Of course, that's how you make it to the Elite Eight. Looking first at how NC State, the third number one seed, was able to make it to the Elite Eight after playing their first two matchups on their home court in Raleigh, after finishing their regular season with a win in the tournament against Miami as the ACC tournament. North Carolina State would win their first matchup against the play-in 16 seed Longwood Lancers. North Carolina State won this matchup by 28 after they outscored Longwood State by 17 points in the second half. They were up by 21 at half. In this first matchup, North Carolina State was led in scoring by their starting guard, um, Reina Perez, their senior out of Goodyear, Arizona, will go on to finish with 16 points in that game. Once they won their first matchup, they would play their second game on their home court against the nine seed Kansas State Wildcats. They would beat Kansas State by 32 points as they finished their season with a 17 and two record at home before going to Bridgeport. Uh, in this ma- in their second matchup, North Carolina State would be led in scoring by their starting forward Kayla Jones Um, their senior out of Jamesville North Carolina would finish with 18 points and even five rebounds in that game once they made it out of their first weekend North Carolina State would go on to the Sweet 16 and in their Sweet 16 matchup yesterday they would end up beating five seed Notre Dame they won that matchup by five uh, well, I'm sorry, they won that matchup by three. They won it 66 to 63 after overcoming a seven point deficit in the fourth quarter to win. In this matchup, North Carolina State would be led in scoring by their starting center in this one um, as Alyssa Cunane, their senior out of Summerfield, North Carolina, would finish with 16 points and 10 rebounds to help North Carolina State make it into this Elite Eight matchup. Looking at who they're going to face off in the regional final, the second seed UConn Huskies would make it through this matchup as they've won all of their matchups in the state of Connecticut, by the way. On their home court, they would go on to beat 15 seed Mercer. They won that matchup 83 to 38. This already coming after they finished their Big East season with a win over Villanova. But in this game against 15 seed Mercer, uh, UConn will go on to be led in scoring by their starting guard for the day, Kristen Williams. Um, UConn senior out of Little Rock, Arkansas would finish with 13 points as UConn would advance to the second round. Once UConn advanced to the second round of this tournament, they would go on to beat the seven seed UCF Knights on their home court. They won this matchup by five. They won it 52 to 47 as UConn's leading scorer in this game would end up being their guard, Ozzy Fudd, their freshman out of Arlington, Virginia. Once UConn would make it through their very first weekend, they would face off in the Sweet 16 against third seed Indiana after Indiana won their first two matchups on their home court. And in their Sweet 16 matchup, UConn would go on to beat third seed Indiana 75 to 58. They would go on to win this matchup by 17 after they outscored Indiana by uh, 13 in the second half after outscoring them in every single quarter. UConn would be led in scoring this particular game by their guard combo of Paige Beckers and Kristen Williams. Um, Of course, Kristen Williams, who I mentioned earlier, their senior out of Little Rock, would go on to finish with 15 points and six rebounds. And then Paige Beckers, UConn sophomore out of Hopkins, Minnesota, would go on to finish with 15 points in the 33 minutes she played. Even their forward, Olivia Nelson Odata, their senior out of Winder, Georgia, would go on to finish with 10 points and 14 rebounds in this game to help UConn make it to this round. And now looking at this regional round in Bridgeport, Connecticut, the winner of this matchup between North Carolina State and UConn will face off against the winner of the Spokane region between first seed Stanford and second seed Texas in the final four, as the final four matchup would take place on April 1st. Um, And then taking a look at 
the last Elite Eight matchup that is scheduled to take place. Looking at the last remaining number one seed in the Wichita region, the Louisville Cardinals are going to face off against the three seed Michigan Wolverines. Taking a look at how the one seed Louisville Cardinals made it here as they are the fourth number one seed to make it to the Elite Eight. After finishing their ACC season with a loss to Miami in the tournament, they would face off against 16 seed Albany in the very first round. In the first round, they would beat Albany by 32 on their home court after they outscored Albany by a score of 48 to 20 in the first half. In this first game, top seed Louisville was led in scoring by their starting guard, Haley Van Lith. Um, Louisville's sophomore out of Wenatchee, Washington, would go on to <clears throat> finish with 20 points in three steals in that span in that game to help Louisville make it to their second game. In their second game, they would go on to ensure that they had an undefeated on their ho- undefeated record on their home court as they beat nine seed Gonzaga 68 to 59. They would win this game by nine. In this match, of the top seed Cardinals would be led in scoring by their starting guard Haley Lynn Lith. Their guard out of Washington would finish with 21 points and six rebounds in the 37 minutes she played she shot eight for 17 from the field three for six from three and and she made both of her free throws on the day and then louisville's starting forward emily angstler um their senior out of new york city would go on to finish with 12 points and 11 rebounds that would be how Louisville made it to the Sweet 16. Once Louisville made it to the Sweet 16, they would go on to win their Sweet 16 matchup yesterday versus four seed Tennessee. They would go on to beat the Lady Vols 76 to 64 after Tennessee won both of their games on their home stadium. Um, Louisville will win this game 76 to 64 after outscoring Tennessee by 11 in the first half and then by an additional seven in the fourth. In this particular matchup, the top seed Louisville Cardinals were led in scoring by their starting guard, Haley Van Lith. Haley Van Lith, their sophomore out of Wenatchee, Washington, will go on to finish with 23 points and six assists. And then Louisville starting forward, Emily Engstler, their senior out of New York City, would finish with a 20-point, 10-rebound game for herself in 33 minutes. She shot 7 for 12 from the field, made all three of her threes, and she shot 3 for 7 from the foul line. That would be how Louisville would make it to this Sweet 16 round. And then taking a look at how Michigan would go on to make it here. Uh, Michigan would make it all the way into this round. First, it, they played their very first weekend on their home court. On their home court in Ann Arbor, they would win their first matchup against 14 seed American by 35 points. They were leading at halftime 31 to or 39 to 13, up by 26, tripling their score. That was before they outscored American by nine in the second half. On the winning end of this matchup, the Wolverines were led in scoring by their starting forward, Naz Hillman. Hillman, their senior out of Cleveland, would finish with 24 points and 11 rebounds to help Michigan make it to the second round. Once Michigan would make it to the second round of this tournament, they would face off against the 11 seed Villanova Wildcats. Michigan would beat Villanova on Michigan's home court to make sure that they were 16-0 on their home court. Michigan won this game by 15. They won it 64-49. And in the second round matchup, they were led by their starting forward, Naz Hillman, out of Cleveland, as she finished with 27 points, 11 rebounds, and five steals. Also for Michigan, their guard off the bench, Leah Brown, out of Auburn, Indiana, would finish with 20 points as well, as Leah Brown will go on to play, um, or Leah Brown will go on to play her 28 minutes, and she also added five rebounds and a couple of steals. Once Michigan would make it through their first weekend off their home court, they would face off in the Sweet 16 against 10 seed South Dakota yesterday. They would beat 10 seed South Dakota 52 to 49. They won by three points. They would go on to be led in scoring this game by their starting forward, Naz Hillman out of Cleveland. She finished with 17 points and 10 rebounds um, as she would help Michigan make it to this Elite Eight matchup. Now that they're at the regional final of the Wichita region, they have to get through a one seed as the winner of this Louisville Michigan. Michigan matchup tomorrow night at nine o'clock, which will be the last Elite Eight matchup. We'll face off against the winner of the Greensboro region between top seed South Carolina and 10 seed Creighton, as that will be the first game that will be decided today. That is the preview for the Elite Eight round. And once all four of these matchups are done, I will preview the round of the final four with all four of the winners of this matchup. So until then, I want to thank the ESPN and NCAA websites for giving me all the facts and figures that I needed for this episode. I want to thank everyone 
everyone for listening as well. Once everything is done today, I'll come back tomorrow on Monday, March 28th for another episode. And as we navigate through this round of like days at a time, I can't wait to come back with a preview for the final four. So until then, thanks for listening. I hope all is well. And thanks for sticking with me through this crazy weekend of college basketball. Thanks for listening and peace out. I'll catch you with more tomorrow.